Hi, this is JT and welcome to G Club. Today's video is going to take in two things that really tend to worry me when it comes to board games. Number one, taking something from my childhood and putting in a board game. Number two, taking something from an IP of a video game and putting it into a board game. Those things tend to concern me. So, today's video we're going to be looking at the game called Centipede, where they take something from Atari and they try to put it into a board game. What could go wrong? Well, let's find out. Let's get it to the table, see how it plays, and I'll come back and give you my final thoughts. In Centipede, you play either a gnome or a centipede. The gnome is dealing with a magical mushroom forest where he's trying to survive the ravenous centipede. We've got the game board set up here for two players, uh, one side being the centipede and the other side uh, being the gnome. And um, what you're looking to do in this game is, as a gnome, you are trying to destroy the centipede. And as a centipede, you are trying to get either the centipede or any of these other bugs to actually eat the gnome. From the gnome side, uh, they're going to take uh, these dice. And they're going to roll it and then they're going to put it out onto this card and this is going to be their dice pool. Now, uh, this shows you um, what their actions are. So like in this case, this is going to go from left to right. He's going to be able to shoot, move four spaces, and then shoot. Or this one here shows it's going to move three, then shoot the wand, and then be able to uh, recharge one of the cards. If there's ever only one die left, when the gnome gets ready to take their turn, they would simply take that, as well as the other five dice, roll it, and then put it back out onto the card. So let's say he uh, he chooses this dice here, or this die here, and uh, he's going to get to shoot one, move four, and shoot one. So let's see how this works. Okay, so in order for him to shoot, he's just going to simply shoot up a straight line, and the first thing he hits is going to get knocked out, so in this case it's a mushroom, that's going to get knocked out and then he's going to move four. Now he's either going to move left or right. In this case, because he's the furthest left, he has to move right, and he has to go the exact number of spaces as indicated on the die, which is four, okay? And then, because it was shoot, move, and shoot, he's going to fire again, and he's going to take out that mushroom. And then there's these cards here. Uh, this one's called the glitch. Uh, this one is called risk control. And then there is a slam the ball and trigger finger. And uh, what these do is they give you some additional bonuses during the turn. But once you use them, they get flipped over and you have to get them recharged later on. Now, this one will allow you to be able to go ahead and re-roll uh, your whole dice pool. Uh, this one allows you to be able to take out a mushroom anywhere on the board. Uh, this one allows you to be able to fire once using your magic wand. And this one allows you to be able to move one space. With the centipede, uh, they do have a deck of cards. And on their turn, they're going to start off with three cards in their hand. And um, they're going to take uh, one card and they're going to play that card. They're going to then move their bugs. And then they're going to then draw another card and put it into their hand. So uh, on a centipede's turn, uh, they're going to look at their cards. They're going to decide which one they want. So let's say that uh, they decide to spawn a spider. After moving our creatures, we can spawn a spider in any empty space on the left or right edge of the board. So we'll set this out, play our turn. Uh, but th then what we're going to do is we're going to move our bugs. Right now, the only thing we have out is the centipede. And the centipede goes based off of a certain amount of movement. And so right now, the length of our centipede is actually a 6. So it only has a speed of 1. So uh, we would simply move him all the way up like that, or her, I suppose, and that would indicate a speed of one. Now, at any point, um, you could have the gnome uh, shoot away part of the centipede. So let's say that happens. Well, that then changes up how it goes. So let's say that this part got shot off, and now what happens is that you have two centipedes. That also changes up their speed. So in the length of three, which is in the back, they would have a speed of three. Um, and the length of two would also have a speed of three. So what does that mean? So if this was uh, this was how it's set up and it was our turn to move, we would go. 
Now it's going to go from left to right, so it's kind of interesting. So let's say we go one, and then we go, because we hit here, this spot, this stops here, and then we go two, and then we stop there, okay? Now it's going to run into the mushroom. So now it's going to go down, and it's going to start going the other direction. It's going to go three, and it's going to start heading in that direction. So same thing over here. We're going to have this one move, one, two, and three and simply move these guys up. And so what you're doing is you're having this kind of snake running back and forth, but as they hit things, such as the mushrooms, they're going to then uh, be bouncing back and forth and get further and further and closer to the gnome. Now, after we moved, we were able to put the spider down somewhere. So let's say we put the spider right here. Now, the spider is pretty cool because the spider can uh, make very large movements. It can move up to nine squares vertically or diagonally. So we can move him nine spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can go all the way over there. Or we could just simply stop where we want to. One, two, three, four. Let's just say we want to stop him right there. Uh, but that's right in front of the gnome. So that could be dangerous and he could get blown away. Uh, but we'll just leave it there for the sake of uh, this video. Now you typically don't move the spider right after uh, you spawn him, but I'm just trying to show you movement. Uh, and then after that, of course, you would then uh, draw a card and put it in your hand, and that would be the end of the centipede's turn. Now, there are other bugs out there. There are a ton of other cards. Um, so like, uh, there is the flea, and the flea allows you to uh, spawn a flea in any empty space on your side of the board, and so we could put him out there. Now, the flea works a little bit differently. Uh, the flea moves up to two squares a turn and always moves in a straight line towards a known player. If there's a mushroom or bug or anything that's in the way, well, it's then removed from the board. So, in this case here, if this guy moves forward two, one, two, boom, he moves away uh, that, uh, that mushroom. If, uh, let's say, uh, this spider gets shot, uh, so let's say the gnome shoots the spider, well, that spider goes away, but it is replaced by a mushroom, much like the video game. So let's take a look at some of these other cards. So the mushroom here allows you to be able to put a mushroom in any empty space on the board that is not adjacent to the centipede um, or remove a mushroom from the board. There's also Berserk. After moving your creatures this turn, your centipede moves two squares downwards towards the enemy without changing its facing. So basically, it just allows them to all of a sudden start making a beeline towards the gnome. There's also a baby centipede where you can spawn a one life centipede. And you can spawn all the centipede uh, pieces of your color, not currently on the board, uh, but then also this one allows you to get a plus one speed to your creature, um, so your guys going really fast at that point. So play will continue until either the centipede is completely destroyed or one of the bugs eats the actual gnome. And uh, how does that happen? Well, if the centipede ever moves right into this lane, he eats the gnome and the game is over, the centipede wins. However, if uh, one of the bugs is right in front of the gnome, okay, because they cannot actually go into this area. If one of the bugs is in front of the gnome at the end of the uh, centipede's turn, then they also win. And that's how you play centipede. Now, there are four player rules um, that you can get into where um, either side has both um, uh, both a gnome and a centipede, and the centipede's coming down trying to eat this gnome, and this gnome and centipede over here with a centipede trying to come and eat this gnome, and of course you're trying to take out each other's centipede. Uh, that can add in some different elements if you like, uh, but I'll let you go check out the rule book for yourself on how to actually pull off the four player. All right, welcome back. Let's get to my final thoughts on centipede. Now, when I think about this game, I think about how much I enjoyed playing the video game, uh, even just punching quarters into the arcade machine um, and playing away at Centipede. Uh, it was a lot of fun to be able to move my guy back and forth and try to shoot up that Centipede as quickly as I could before I got eaten by all the bugs. Now, does this game make you feel like you're playing Centipede? Um, yes, it does. Actually, I feel like I'm playing Centipede from the gnome standpoint. Obviously, if I'm playing the Centipede, which you don't really get to play the video game, that's a little bit in the reverse side, but I still feel like I was playing Centipede. Now, when it comes to how good is this board game, um, I think it's actually a really good board game. Now, it does have some luck, um, which is mitigated by some of these cards that you actually get to play as the gnome, uh, because you're dealing with dice. Uh, as a Centipede, you just have the cards, and so you have the luck of the draw as far as what you have in your hand. 
man oh man is that centipede tough uh, so far every game I played the centipede has won out um, and and while there's been some games where it seems like it's been pretty close it seems to lean towards the centipede now that could be us playing that's not to say that the centipede is OP or, or you know the game is broken that just means that out of the players that I've played with various folks um, it just seemed like the person who played centipede just tend to win um, so it's it's a lot of fun I, I really enjoyed that back and forth uh, the guys that I played with um, had also grown up on centipede they also enjoyed it I didn't find anybody kind of sitting back and going yeah I didn't really like that it was uh, that really kind of took me back and really made me feel like I was playing centipede um, I've also played it with uh, some of the boys who never really got a chance to play with it very much. Uh, they seem to enjoy it as well, so it doesn't seem to be very uh, theme-driven that it has to be centipede um, in order for you to enjoy the game. Uh, there's a lot of strategy, a lot of back and forth uh, that's happening between the two. I think the most difficult concept, though, for an individual getting into this game, it's going to be how the centipede just kind of strolls uh, back and forth um, down the map. That seemed to be something that became very difficult uh, for brand new players to the game. So I recommend that if you're going to play this with somebody um, and you're a little bit more experienced, you get that roll down and you play the centipede first so they can see it for themselves. Um, it usually takes like a full game for some folks to really catch on to that. Um, outside of that, it's, it's a pretty simple game uh, to pick up. You just have to pay attention to uh, the detailed rules of each one of those bugs. Um, but ultimately it really works. Um, I haven't had a game where I felt bored or disengaged or anything like that. I, I have to say that if you enjoy Centipede, the, the video game, and you're looking for something that's going into a board game, I do recommend checking this one out. I think it's actually done pretty well. Uh, is it one that I'm going to plot all the time? Probably not. I think most people that are going to want to play this game are going to be folks that are from my generation. Um, or folks that enjoy the, those older video games such as Centipede and they want to try it out in a board game. Now, this is supposed to be a part of a line of games, which is actually something I'm really excited about. Missile Command's coming up next. Uh, I read up on that. That looks fantastic. I'm just going to put in you know, my pitch for it right now. So IDW, if you're watching, give us Pitfall. You got to do it. Pitfall, it's got to happen. Uh, you know, come on, let's do it. Let's make it work, okay? Even if it's a solo game, I don't mind. We can do that. It'll work. But man, um, I really like what IDW is doing here uh, with this game. Um, I do like what they're doing with the series. I'm really interested to get my hands on Missile Command to see how that plays out, as well as to see how Joust works. So um, if you're looking for something nostalgic, if you're looking for something that works from a video game port into a board game, I highly recommend you check out Centipede. Um, I think it's a, it's a really good port. Um, and as something that, while I don't necessarily say you just got to run out and buy, it's definitely, I think, worth checking out and seeing if it fits your taste. So, with that said, if you like what you heard, uh, if you like this review or you like other content just like what we put out, uh, we're a family-friendly uh, video uh, channel, and we enjoy putting out a lot of fun content like uh, interviews, uh, we do Kickstarter previews, and we even do things like uh, epic movie trailers for board games, as well as some bad lip dubbing. So, if any of that sounds interesting to you, hit that subscribe button and check us out. And if you have any questions about this video, uh, or anything with the game, please post that in the comments below, and we'd be happy to be able to help you out with that. With that said, my name is JT, and you've been watching G Club. Tradition! Tradition! Tradition!